Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and on today's infotainment review, we're taking a look at BMW's latest iDrive system. We're inside a 2014 BMW X5, and this is a large high-resolution LCD that's mounted to the dashboard, sort of like a tablet computer. I find this look very attractive. I'd like to know what you think about it, however, because I have received comments from a number of people that find this new design trend to be a little bit distressing. Overall, this design is designed to look a little bit less bulky on the dashboard. If I zoom this primary camera out, you can see that, well, previous generations of BMW iDrive had sort of a double bump on the dashboard. This looks an awful lot less uh, bulky on the dashboard, an awful lot slimmer, and I think it really makes the cabin look a little bit more airy and a little bit more welcome. Now, part of what's new for 2014 is this BMW iDrive controller right here in the center console, and it now includes a finger writing recognition area on this iDrive controller. That's why this knob is so much bigger than it was before. I'll move the camera around so that we can see the rest of the buttons on the system. We still have direct access buttons over here for telephone, navigation, the menu, media, radio, etc. We have our back button and our option button right there. And of course, this dial controller still toggles left and right, up and down, and then clicks to enter. Let's go over the software's features one at a time. First, we'll start off with multimedia, and I do have a Apple iPhone paired with the system right here, as you can see. Right now, we are on our external devices, and we can take a look, and we can see we have our full album art with our iPhone integration. This does work very well with USB, as well as Android phones that have music on them. You can go forward and backward via this screen, or you can also use the dedicated buttons on the steering wheel or on the radio interface itself, right lower in the dashboard. You can see what is on the now playing list, and you can scroll down and see all those tunes there that way. We can also search for music on our device. That's via that little uh, glass icon right there. You can search by genre, artist, composer, album, or title. This is really where this finger writing recognition starts to play a role in this system. So if we go down to title, and uh, we take a look at, uh, for instance, uh, A to Z search. And if we go over here, we have a cover of a Lily Allen song. And uh, you can see right now we're displaying our album art right there as well. If we use the Android controller and toggle left, we can go back and we can see we have our external devices to select right here. We have our iPhone interface. We also have the plug-in slot that's in the center console. I don't have anything plugged in there right there. But you can find plugins for certain BlackBerry phones as well as iPhones. We have audio input. Uh, output via USB, sorry, from our Bluetooth device. We also have our auxiliary input right there. If we go back, we have uh, the ability to change the tone settings in the car, treble, bass, balance, etc. We'd have a few more options if we had the Harman Kardon or Bang & Olufsen sound system in this car. Music collection is the built-in hard drive uh, database in this iDrive system. So there is a hard drive in there and you can rip songs off of CDs or DVDs and insert them into that music collection. We then of course have a CD DVD changer option right up there as well. If we move on down to the radio option, we do have Pandora Radio, and that's integrated into the radio option. So if I toggle to the left, you can see what radio options we have here. I have AM and FM, because we don't have the satellite radio option in this particular vehicle. We have presets. We also have Pandora, which is what we were looking at right there. Pandora does have full control over the Pandora app that's running on the phone. As you can see right there, it's running on the iPhone itself. You can thumbs up thong, thumb down, thumbs them down, favorite them, and you can also skip on over to the next song. If we go on back, we also have a shortcut button to the tone setting right there. Moving down to the telephone interface, you'll find the same dial pad with the same sort of finger writing recognition going on here. So we can say two, two three. and you can see then you can enter your number that way, or you can enter the number using the scrolly wheel, whichever way is easier for you. You can again toggle to the left and you can Go to your phone book, your active calls, redial, receive numbers, etc. We also have messages. If your phone supports it, you can have the system read out your messages right there from this interface. Uh, you can also see uh, unread messages, all messages, text messages, service messages, etc. This is not currently supported on the iPhone, so just Android phones have this feature at this moment. You can also see what your Bluetooth paired devices are in the system right there via that shortcut. In the navigation interface, we do have a fully featured navigation interface with traffic information right there on the screen. If we uh, zoom out, you can see how snappy the system is. It is very, very responsive to inputs from the driver. Uh, we also have a wide variety of different views. We can view north, we can uh, view the direction of travel with a 2D view or a 3D view, whichever way you like it. 
Uh, you can turn the traffic information on and off, and this gives us more of a traditional 3D map view with topographic information right there. You can choose what information you want on the screen, what points of interest, etc., whether you want weather information to be displayed on the screen, traffic flow, that kind of a thing. I prefer this particular traffic flow map to that gray traffic flow map. I just think it's a little bit more attractive. Uh, if we go back, you can also see traffic incidents along your route. You can see points of interest, search for them, etc., route preference. You can uh, turn your voice guidance on and off via this menu. And right up here is where we would enable and disable guidance. Right now, we have a current destination entered into the system, so we'll just go ahead and stop that. And we're going to enter a new destination so you can see how that works. And this, again, is where the finger writing recognition comes into play. So we're going to enter a street here, and uh, we'll call it... Uh, can't read my handwriting, story of my life. There we go. So right now we have Deedham Court. You can toggle over to the left and that way it'll bring you to this menu here and you can see approximately where that is and you can see that this other one is uh, down there and this one is right over there. So that's probably the one I meant, it's Deedham Court. Um, doesn't know the town, so we're gonna have to enter that. And if we scoot over here to this other side, it will give us a few possible options for where it thinks that could be located. So we're gonna say it's in Lincoln. I have no idea where that is. And uh, you can enter intersections with other streets, or you can enter house numbers. Again, you can use this number writing recognition pad right here to uh, enter a particular number. Three is already entered because everything starts with a three. So uh, we'll enter a four, and then we'll have to click okay. And then we can accept as the destination, and it will then start our guidance over there. Follow the arrow on the display. The when leaving, turn left. The system has now decided how we should arrive at our destination. If I zoom all this way out, you can also see that we now have weather information displayed on the screen because I enabled that weather option in that previous screen. Overall, this mapping interface is one of the best in the industry. It's very, very snappy, especially if you take a look at something like Cadillac Q. It's not nearly this rapid in screen changes. This doesn't have the Google overlay of satellite information that Audi's MMI system does, but I actually find this much, much more uh, intuitive and much easier to use than MMI in terms of mapping interface. It also is more responsive on the whole. In most of these screens, we can toggle over to the right and we can select a split screen content. So you can see right here, we have the navigation screen over here and we have our navigation direction over here on the right. You can change what you want in this split screen. You can choose map facing north if you want to. You can choose map facing direction of travel, perspective view. You can have your position there so it shows you right where you are. Uh, you can also go and choose onboard information, trip computer information. Uh, you can choose your xDrive status, which is sort of an inclination sensor in the vehicle, so you can tell what angle you're at uh, side to side or forward to backward, and also your direction of travel right there in that system. Um, you can turn the split screen off, of course, if you like. You have your entertainment details, which I find very handy right over there on that side of the screen. And you'll notice all the transitions in the system are very rapid and they're also very fluid and very smooth. And uh, there's a great attention to detail in iDrive. Everything is very intuitively done. So we have a little dot over here because we know that that's an area we can click over to. And the dot then expands to this little icon right here if we, could, if we can actually click it. Um, you'll notice if we toggle on over here, this icon pops up so we know we're over there. If we toggle to the left, then all of a sudden we get another knob. And this knob indicates that we can rotate our options around like that. And you'll notice that there's another line right over here because that means we can toggle something uh, over here additionally to the left. And again, we can go to the left again and you can go side to side that way in the system. It is very intuitive as far as interactions go. Over on the office tab, we have our voice memos. We also have uh, notes, messages, contacts, etc. I didn't find this office section of BMW's iDrive terribly handy. However, BMW's connected drive section is very, very handy. On my iPhone now, we're going to search for the BMW app, and right there I have BMW connected. We're gonna load that, and uh, in a moment it will connect with the vehicle, and you'll get a number of other features. So you can see we're connecting right now, and now we're connected. So if we start out up top, just above the apps first, in correct order here, we do have vehicle messages. You can think of BMW Assist sort of like BMW's version of OnStar. We can call for roadside assistance. We can see BMW online in the car. Um, we can also choose customer relations if we want to have service for the car done. We can schedule service requests, etc. 
Down here on the BMW apps, we have our Eco Pro Analyzer. This tells you how uh, green you've been driving your BMW. Web radio is sort of like Pandora. This is BMW's web radio stations for streaming radio. It does use the data service on your Bluetooth connected device or your USB connected device. Right now we see we're on KQED and we're on a 32K per st uh, second stream. We can change to different bit rates uh, depending on what channel uh, you're on and what that channel supports. You can see similar stations. There are a wide variety of local radio stations available via this setup. Next we have Wikilocal, and this is actually quite a bit handier than it looks right up front. Wikilocal will mine iDrive for your location. So based on your GPS location, it will then search Wikipedia for articles that it thinks are interesting about things around you. So right now you can see we have a bunch of different uh, locations around us. Uh, and I think Lake Ellsman sounds interesting. So we'll go ahead and uh, see what's, uh, what's about Lake Ellsman. Now that we've selected Lake Ellsman, we can actually have the system text-to-speech read this out to us. And you can actually have this read out to you while you're driving. Reservoir. Overall, I found the Wiki Tour Guide to be an awful lot handier than I thought it would be initially. It did seem a little bit gimmicky to me at first, but in reality, I used it quite frequently. Next up, we have our Facebook app. And as you can imagine, this allows you to integrate with your Facebook. It allows you to hear your status updates spread out aloud to you. You can go forward post, back post, etc. You can also post status updates to Facebook using this interface. And if I toggle over here to the split screen and turn it off, you can see more of these uh, uh, options here. So we'll turn the split screen off. And as you can see, it mines iDrive for information. So since the car has a thermometer in it, it knows that it's 67 degrees out there and it knows that we're in Los Gatos. It also knows based on its last connection with my phone, who I last spoke to on the phone, and it can post that right there. Um, it uh, knows where I'm headed because I just entered an address in the system and it knows when I'll be there. Um, it knows how far I am, of course, from my destination. And uh, you can also have it post and say I'm online in my BMW with BMW connected. That sounds kind of like a, a dweeby kind of post to, to post on Facebook, if I'm honest, but it, uh, it is kind of interesting. Uh, and if you have a convertible model of BMW, it would actually know whether your top was up or down and it would allow you to post that status right online as well. The Twitter app operates basically the same. I don't tweet, so I don't really have anything to test that with. The calendar app reads your calendar database on your phone and uh, lets you know those events right there on that screen. You can get news, and this transfers news from BMW's RSS data sources. So this car is full of uh, various BMW RSS data sources, and you can again have these articles read out loud to you if you so desire, clicking that button right there. Under additional apps, on this side is where you'll find the Pandora app that we also saw in the radio interface earlier. Going back to the main menu, we next have the vehicle info options. We have our efficient dynamics screen, so you can see what your fuel economy has been like over a period of time. It'll also tell you what drive mode you were in when those fuel economy scores were recorded. You can change this window between four hours, one hour, etc., or uh, let's see here, 16 hours, so you can see what it was like all the way back then. And you can also get up to the date information of what Efficient Dynamics is doing for you at the moment. Since we're parked, it's not really doing a whole lot for us. Under Quick Reference Guide, we can pull up a quick reference guide of the vehicle and we can see what the functions are, how they operate, etc. You can see what buttons are on the steering wheel. Uh, you can see the buttons on the steering wheel itself and what they do in the car. If we go back, we can also search by pictures in the vehicle. So we can click around and we can uh, choose various areas of the vehicle and then narrow down features that we want to see. We can also choose the animated explanations tab. And uh, for instance, we can see uh, what this uh, X drive is all about in the car. And then we can play the animated. This intelligent all wheel drive system transmits the power optimally to the road, even in difficult road conditions. And of course, the video is all stored inside the iDrive system, so it's always available for you. Uh, and this is kind of an interesting little explanation. If we uh, go back, we can also read the entire owner's manual as you would normally expect it to be read in the book form. We also get a book form of the owner's instruction manual, but this one's always there, and it is a little bit easier to search and read through. Uh, we don't have the ability to have this read to us in this particular version of iDrive. If we go down to onboard info, this is basically a trip computer that you can reset in the system. We have our average consumption as well as average fuel economy. The trip computer is sort of like trip computer B, and this one right now is set to automatically reset every time we start the car. If we go down to vehicle status, this is where you can see things like uh, what your engine oil level is in the car. Right now our engine oil level is apparently at the minimum. We can see what pressure each of our tires are set to, 
and we can also see when our next service is required for various vehicle systems. So we can see when our next emissions uh, inspection is, it's October of 2018. We can see when our next oil change is, we can see how what our lifetime left on the front and rear brake pads is. It's approximately 29,000 miles on the front brake pads and we can see what our brake fluid, vehicle check, etc. Next up we have sport displays and this shows how much power and torque your engine is developing at any one time. I can floor the car and you can see that we get a little momentary indicator right up there to show you peak horsepower and peak torque. If I go down to the xDrive status, you can see that same screen that we saw earlier, vehicle inclination that's side to side and forward and backward. We also get our little compass rows up top and then you can see what the torque distribution is in the car for the xDrive system. Now because our car has the optional torque vectoring rear axle, if we were going around a corner, say to the right, then this left outside rear wheel would have a really large red arrow, and this side would have no arrow at all because the car has a torque vectoring system to help you steer around that corner. And so it does have kind of an active display. You really can see something on that display as you're driving around on the road. Of course, it makes it a little bit more difficult to concentrate on the road. If we go back again to the main menu, we next have vehicle settings. And the iDrive does have a wide variety of vehicle settings available. Uh, we have our info display here. We can change what we want on that screen. Uh, we can change control display options. This is brightness information for this particular screen right here. Uh, you can also change whether you want the system to uh, display the driving mode when you select it, which is the button right there in the center console. So you can switch through the various driving modes and it'll display them right there. Going back, date and time and language and units are fairly self-explanatory. We then have touchpad options and the touchpad options allow you to enable and disable the spell corrector. You can choose whether you want it to work in the map. and You can also choose whether you want the system to speak those letters or numbers out to you once it's recognized them. Under connections, we have our fairly typical Bluetooth interface. You can add new devices. You can choose what you want to use the device for. And the system does work relatively well with various Bluetooth devices in the car at the same time. We have our tone settings there again. Speed is where you can set the automatic speed warning at the, in the car. We have our climate settings right here. Front seat heating allows you to choose whether you want all of your heating on the back or the seat bottom cushion or whether you want it evenly split like it is right now. Fairly self-explanatory there. Down on lighting, we have the lighting design. So if we look uh, out, we zoom out a little bit from the screen, you can see that we have this ambient lighting strip right over here on either side of the iDrive screen and we can change its color right here in the system. So we can choose orange and you'll see that that line just turned orange. You can also choose white or you can choose blue and then you can choose certain combinations of colors and they're sort of highlighted over here on that other screen. Going back one, you can also change the brightness of that interior illumination. You can change your pathway lighting. You can turn on and off the triple turn signal as well as your daytime running lamps. Under the driving mode option, you can configure your sport mode and your eco pro mode, and you can decide whether you want sport mode to involve the drivetrain and the chassis, or just the drivetrain, or just the chassis in its operation. Doors and keys is fairly self-explanatory. You choose how you want the doors and keys to work. Parking, you can choose whether you want the parking sensors to be activated and how you want them to show on the screen. The tailgate option allows you to change the height of the tailgate, so you can choose to have it open a very restricted height, etc. It's very handy if you're in a short garage. You can also copy your profile in iDrive and take it from vehicle to vehicle. So you can import or export your profile and bring it to a new vehicle. And then lastly, we have a software update setting. iDrive continues to be my favorite infotainment system available in any vehicle, regardless of vehicle price or vehicle class. iDrive is just very, very well thought out. Part of that is because BMW has been doing iDrive for so long. The initial versions of iDrive came out quite a long time ago and quite a bit before a lot of the other entries in the segment. That's given BMW a decent amount of time to get everything right. Early versions of iDrive were definitely buggy and they definitely did a lot of things wrong and they weren't that intuitive. But over time, BMW has managed to massage this product into a very intuitive and very easy to use system. The system also has a very elegant look to it overall and I really like the way the graphics work in the system. BMW has also continued to add additional feature functionality in the system over time, like the app integration, the improved voice recognition for voice commanding your tunes, and now this finger writing recognition controller, which gives you another alternative input method for the system in addition to the voice command system and this regular old controller using it as sort of a jog and shuttle dial. You can do that hand writing recognition, which may work better for some people, especially if the voice recognition system doesn't tend to recognize your voice very well. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen. That way you'll be updated on all of my latest videos, including the upcoming complete video on the 2014 BMW X5. 
I expect that to come up in about the next day or so. Go ahead and share this video, comment on this video, like this video, tell me what you liked and didn't like about the video, what we can improve upon in the future. You'll also find some related videos at the end of this video. You can email me at alex at alexonautos.com if you have any questions. And you can always find me at facebook.com slash alexonautos.